This is COVID Conversations, where we discuss the latest COVID-19 news with the experts. A third vaccine option enters the fray, offering more opportunities for people to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Johnson & Johnson recently announced their vaccine was 66% effective at preventing symptomatic disease and 85% effective against preventing severe illness. I'm here with Jessica Ansel, nurse practitioner and clinical research coordinator at the Center for Virology and Vaccine Research at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Her team, along with the Baruch Lab at BIDMC, were key researchers and developers of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Jess, welcome back. <laughs> <That was me. laughs> Today's question is, what do we know about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Does this vaccine have a live virus in it? It does not have a live virus in it. So it's a DNA-based vaccine. Um, so what we do is we take the genetic sequence for the COVID spike protein, and we're able to make DNA from that. And then that goes into your body and is able to make RNA, and then that's able to make the spike proteins. But it's not a live virus. We should really take a look at this trial. It was done in 45,000 people globally and in a really diverse population. So they actually reported that of those 45,000 people, 45% identified as Latinx and 19% identified as Black. And 34% of the people enrolled in the trial were over the age of 60. So we know from experience, right, that the COVID-19 pandemic is disproportionately affecting uh, minority populations, the Black, the Latinx populations, as well as the older community. And so being able to see such great efficacy in this vaccine in the populations that need it most is super promising. That's amazing to hear. I think that was a huge question that people had, uh, making sure that there was a diverse group of people that were that were going through these clinical trials. And, and hopefully that will really um, make hesitant communities and make hesitant populations uh, feel more comfortable knowing that, that there was a lot of work, a lot of thought put behind this, and there was a, a diverse array of folks who, who actually got to you know, test this out before it was made out available to the public. So Pfizer and Moderna, people have to get two shots but the Johnson & Johnson, if I'm correct, is only one shot. Is that true? That's true. Um, and this is a game changer uh, in the pandemic itself. So what's great is that it's, it's a one and done. One shot of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine showed great enough efficacy to protect people against COVID-19. And what's great about that is that we're going to be able to vaccinate more people more quickly. And that will hopefully help us put an end to this pandemic. And another um, you know, great thing about that too, right, is you can picture how this is super helpful for rural areas where maybe it's difficult for people to get back to a clinic two times for a vaccine. This time they only have to travel once to the clinic to get vaccinated and then they're protected. That's an absolutely great point. I know that there are a lot of people having questions about getting to certain vaccination sites and, and it's a big concern. So this is really gonna kind of cut down those concerns, uh, I would say a significant amount. Yes, I agree. <laughs> Excellent. You know, people uh, were hearing that the Moderna and Pfizer or even AstraZeneca, the, the, the efficacy rate was 95% or 94% and, and Johnson and & Johnson did come out and their, their rate was lower. But should people have concerns about that? Is 95% a common number that people normally would see in a vaccine? So that's a great question. And I do think the media tends to spin things a certain way, you know, for that wow factor. But the Johnson and Johnson vaccine is, it really is a game changer. So like you said, the vaccine itself is 66% effective globally against uh, symptomatic disease. And it's 85% effective against severe disease. And that was at the 28 day mark in the study. By 49 days out in the study, it was 100% effective against hospitalization and death. So the things to note here, right, are number one, the FDA looks for 50% effectiveness for a vaccine to even be licensed. So we're already above that. And in general, efficacy among vaccines varies greatly. You have like the flu vaccine, which, you know, is maybe only 40 to 60% effective. And then you have, you know, the MMR, the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, which is like 97% effective against measles. So there's really great variation on the market right now. What we really wanna focus on with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is that it's 85% effective against severe illness. So what's the biggest issue with this pandemic? It's making people sick, they're going to the hospital and unfortunately the death rate has been you know, quite high. And so 85% of the people in this study were protected 
from going to the hospital, from getting sick, from dying. And by 49 days out, 100% of people were effective, uh, were protected. So when we look at it in that sense, it's, it's really actually a remarkable vaccine. So ultimately, the, the, the option having not not so much that people have the option to choose the vaccine that they will they will get when they go to their clinic, but just having more vaccines available is really going to help us get people protected, get to herd immunity. So the more the better. It's not really a competition, right? No. And I think all the scientists, at least that I work with, have always been about, you know, working together. You know, we this is this, we've never had a pandemic like this before, right? At least in my lifetime. <laughs> so we really have to create vaccines at a speed that we've never done before. And so that means that we have to have a lot of vaccine products on the market very, very quickly. And so the best way to do that is to have multiple vaccines available to the general public. That's really the only way we're going to end this pandemic. Excellent. The, the work that you all have been doing is extremely impressive. And we thank you so much for your hard work. Jess, it's always a pleasure to have you on the program. And thank you uh, again. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're so welcome. This is Cover Conversations, where we discuss the latest COVID-19 news with the experts.